what if I told you you were drinking coffee all wrong? No, seriously, most people drink coffee at the wrong time of the day. Before I explain, welcome to my channel, guys. My name is Frank Cusimano. I have a PhD in nutrition and metabolic biology. And today we're gonna dive in and talk about coffee, which is one of my favorite topics. All right, before we do that though, I think it's important that I at least grab some coffee. All right guys, I'm missing something. I can't make a, a video about coffee without actually drinking coffee. So hold that thought, we'll be right back. Nothing better than a good cup of coffee. All right guys, back to the video. Coffee in hand, let's do this. But before jumping in, if you guys ever want me to do future videos on coffee, I am happy to do it. Coffee is actually one of my favorite topics and that's specifically because of caffeine. Now, caffeine has several different effects on the body. Previously on Instagram, I've done posts on the effects of caffeine on dehydration, the effects of it on kidney disease, and also the effects of caffeine on cancer and possibly the link with cancer. And so if you guys ever want me to do videos on those topics, I am happy to do it. Today's video though is just going to be about timing. And the reality is, is most people drink coffee at the wrong time of the day. So let's cover what coffee does and when you should be drinking it to get that optimal benefit and really to have that caffeine actually work and keep you awake and keep you alert. Coffee works through several different mechanisms, and most people don't actually realize that coffee is actually the most widely consumed psychoactive drug. Now, caffeine is a stimulant of the central nervous system, and it falls under the drug class of methylxanthines. The effects of caffeine are mediated via several different mechanisms. First, caffeine inhibits and antagonizes the A1 and A2A adenosine receptors. It also inhibits phosphodiesterase. It affects intracellular release of calcium, and it inhibits and antagonizes different benzodiazepine receptors. <sighs> okay, wow, that sounded real nerdy. Let's break it down and make it a little more comprehensive. Adenosine, just like melatonin, which you may have heard of before, builds up throughout the day and makes you sleepier at night. Adenosine builds up in the, in the synapse between the neurons of specific neurons in the brain. And so throughout the day, that buildup will gradually make you more tired and more sleepy. Well, what caffeine does is it blocks those receptors and doesn't allow adenosine to bind. Now, while all that is great, caffeine actually has another physiological effect that's even just as important, and that is that caffeine increases our cortisol levels. Cortisol, as you may know, is our stress hormone, and most people know that stress isn't that good for us. Cortisol actually has both beneficial and negative effects. In the morning, Cortisol, your cortisol levels actually shoot up, which is what makes you alert and awake early in the morning. Naturally, your body does this because it wants to allow your body to wake up in the morning and get up and have that fresh start. Cortisol and caffeine actually have very similar effects on that wakefulness and alertness. Now, throughout a 24-hour period, your cortisol levels actually fluctuate quite a bit. And this fluctuation is based off of your sleep and your wake cycles and also your food intake. Now I know this is a lot of buildup, but let's take a closer look and really analyze what cortisol does throughout the day because if caffeine is gonna increase cortisol as well, we wanna make sure that we take caffeine when your cortisol levels are low, that way you can get added benefit from the caffeine and you're not just masking the caffeine effects from the cortisol. All right, let's take a closer look. Now on the left, we have our cortisol levels, and on the bottom, the x-axis, we have time throughout the day. This is when you wake up at around 6 to 7 a.m. This is when you eat lunch around 12 to 1 in the afternoon, and this is when you go to bed, about 10 or 11 p.m. Now when you sleep, cortisol is at its baseline. At dawn, your cortisol levels rise, you then wake up, and within one hour of waking up, your cortisol levels actually peak. This is why if you get past that first 30 minutes of waking up, your cortisol levels actually help you stay awake. Now the first dip of cortisol occurs between 10 to 12 in the morning. 
Now this is your window. This is when you should drink your first cup of coffee. Now what it will do is it'll counter that cortisol dip, block some of the adenosine receptors, release cortisol, and actually make you feel more awake again. Drinking coffee before this period actually does very little for you because the cortisol levels are so high that most of the alert and wakefulness that you do have, if you have any, is actually from the cortisol and not from the caffeine. Now, as the day progresses, cortisol goes up around lunch and then dips around 2 to 4 p.m. If you need a little bit more caffeine, this is when you could have more. For me, sometimes I have caffeine again in the afternoon, coffee, and sometimes I instead go with green tea, matcha, or a chai latte, or a chai tea, just to mix it up and kind of get a variation of different caffeine. Okay, so that's it for the video. Just to recap, the best time of the day to drink coffee is actually between 10 and 12 in the morning and then between two to four in the afternoon. I know for many of us, waking up can be a chore and immediately we all wanna wake up and grab that cup of coffee because we need it to feel like we're awake. But in reality, I've learned this from experience is that if you just hold off, you will feel awake eventually. And then by about 10 or 12 is when you're gonna to start to feel tired again, 10 or 12 in the morning, and that's when you should jump in and have the first cup of coffee. I know it sounds difficult, but for me, it has worked. I would love to hear you guys' own experience. If you try it, I'd love to hear your experience and then jot it down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this works for you. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. It really does help a lot. That's it for this video. And for everyone that's still there, I want you guys to write in the comments, what's your favorite type of coffee? For me, it's probably the old school hand-pressed espresso, which is still my favorite, uh, or just a regular Americano or a drip coffee made from a Chemex like I made today. With that, that guys, Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let me know how the coffee thing works for you. And until next time, stay well guys.